Hello everybody, my name is Kata and welcome to Mobility and Stretch, the Hips Edition. So we're going to be working on a little bit of mobility for your hips. You will need a yoga strap or something similar. A sturdy belt will also work or if you have access to one of the very large um, assisted pull-up bands, so the big, huge circle loops. I would not recommend doing this with a traditional um, resistance band because the band is round and you have a very good chance that it will roll off of your foot and hit you in the face and that's not going to feel very good. So a really sturdy belt or a yoga strap or something similar. And then you're also going to need a wooden dowel or I have an old mop handle. You can use an actual mop or an actual broom if that's what you have accessible. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to start by lying on our tummies and we're going to be doing some breathing drills. So you will be resting your forehead on your hands. I will rest my chin on my hands, otherwise I get really bad feedback from my microphone. But we're going to be breathing in and out through our noses. So you're going to rest your forehead on your hands and you're going to have your toes pointed. You're going to breathe in through your nose for two to three seconds. Pause, exhale through your nose for three to four seconds. Pause for two to three seconds and then repeat the cycle. So breathe in through the nose Pause, exhale through the nose. Pause, inhale. Three more good breaths. onto our backs and we're going to grab our strap. So I'm going to start by moving my dowel out of the way. So I'm going to start with the strap underneath my left foot and I'm going to place it just below the ball of the foot. I'm going to have that leg straight and I'm going to take my right leg and I'm going to have my knee bent and my foot flat on the floor. I'm going to roll all the way down so that I'm lying on my back. And to start with this exercise, we're going to take our left leg and you're going to straighten your, straighten your knee by tightening your quad. So straighten the knee and you're going to pull the toe towards the knee. You're going to take a nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, you're going to use the strap to help you lift the leg, keeping the knee straight until you feel a stretch. Hold for two and then take it back down again. Let's lift again. So use the strap to help and then set it back down. Lift and down and lift. Now the trick with this one is you have to keep the quad tight and the knees straight and the toes flexed. 
let's do one more. Good, relax a little bit. And we're gonna adjust the strap and we're gonna place it so it's under the ball of the foot, securely tied around the pinky toe and the ball of the foot and the big toe. Again, knee is straight. We're gonna work our calves. So we're gonna point our toes, tighten the calf. And now we're going to relax and stretch the calf. Point the toe and stretch. Now, if you're feeling a lot of tension in the hamstrings, then take your leg a little bit farther out. But we're gonna point and flex. Good, we have two more. Point and flex. And last one, point and flex. Good, and you're gonna bring it in and you're going to place the strap again just below the ball of the foot, not quite in the arch. And you're gonna bring both legs up and try to have them perpendicular to the ceiling if, or perpendicular to the floor if possible. Both legs, the knees are straight and the toes are pulled towards the shin. The leg with the strap stays right where it is and you're going to slowly lower the right leg, getting close to the floor, and then coming back up again. So notice my left leg is not moving at all. So the strap is holding that leg in place, my quad is tight. Now if your hamstrings are very tight, you can take the leg out a little bit, but keep that core braced so your low back is supported. And again, the knees are straight, toes are pulled up, don't get lazy. These are tough. Good, one more. Excellent, all right, let's bring it in. Take the strap off of your left leg and now place it under the foot on the right. So again, we're starting from the beginning, placing the strap underneath the ball of the foot, just above the arch. Your left leg, knee is bent, foot is flat on the floor. You're gonna take the leg all the way straight on the floor and we're going to make sure that our quad is tight, our knee is straight and our toes are pulled up towards the ceiling and we're gonna use the strap to help lift our leg until we feel a stretch in the hamstring and then we release. If you're bringing it up so high that you feel pain in your hamstring, stop before you get to that point. We want to feel a little tug. We don't want to feel any sharp pain. If there's sharp pain, your leg is telling you that's too much and your leg will win. So don't force it and don't fight it. Good, we have three more. Three. two, and one. Good, relax the foot, bring it in. Adjust the strap so that it's under the ball of the foot. Again, knee is straight. You can take the leg out a little bit. If it takes pressure off the hamstring, we're gonna point the toe. And now we're gonna use the strap to help pull the toe back and stretch the calf. Point and pull, point and pull, three more, point and pull, point and pull, last time, point. Pull, good, bring it in. Return the strap to just below the ball of the foot. Both legs are up, knees are straight, toes are pulled and flexed. The leg that has the strap stays right where it is. Now your left leg is gonna lower down and bring it back up again. 
lower and lift. So this strap holding the leg up is helping lock in a neutral hip position. If your leg doesn't make it to the floor, that's okay. Stop where you can and bring it back up again. You can always roll up a towel or place a pillow underneath the leg for a stopping point. Good, notice my other leg is not moving at all. I am bending my knee a little though, so watch out for that. Last one. Good, all right, let's bring both knees in, remove the strap, set the feet down. Left leg is going to be on the floor in a glute bridge position. Pull the right knee into the chest. This is locking our pelvis into a position to help keep our spine neutral. Take a nice deep breath in, and as you exhale, push through the heel on the left leg, lift, and then set it back down again. We have five more. Five. Four. Three. Two. And last one. Good. Readjust for the other side. So pull the left knee into the chest. Right heel is on the floor. I lift the toes to make sure that I'm pushing through my heel and not trying to push through my toes. Nice deep breath. And exhale and lift. Now as we do the next five, Think about what your knee is doing on the leg that's lifting and lowering. Kind of keep an eye out. Sometimes it likes to wobble, or sometimes it likes to kick out to the side or to knock in. And we want to avoid that. We have two more. Two. And last one. Lift and lower. Excellent. Let's roll ourselves up and we're going to grab our dowel. So again, you can roll to the side or bring yourself up. Now we are going to be in a half kneeling position. So if you need to place something underneath that back knee, you can roll up your mat or you can find a little bit of a cushion. You can all this do, also do this exercise in a lunge position, but you really have to watch your form if that's what you choose to do. So we're going to grab our dowel. We're gonna take our right leg back and our left leg is front. We're gonna tuck our toes under in the back. Sometimes putting a little pressure on those toes takes pressure off of the knees. In this position, you want to be sure that we're not shifting our weight into the front leg. We want to shift it back so there is a straight line from our shoulder to our hip to our knee. You should be able, with a little support from your dowel, you should be able to lift your foot without having to shift forwards and backwards. So the trick with this one is not to let your weight shift into that front leg. Keep it to the back. So get into your position, nice and tall. I take this behind. If your shoulders don't like this, you can have it in front, but it must be glued to your breastbone. Don't let it separate. Nice and tall. Left leg is forwards. I'm rotating to the left and back into the center. So my hips, knees, and toes remain pointing forwards as I rotate my torso towards the corner. Here's three. Three more. Three. Good, notice I'm leaning forwards. So I shifted my weight back. Good, one more. Good, return to the center. We're gonna switch sides. 
So again, weight is in the back leg, glute is squeezed. I'm gonna do this one with it in front so you can see how it feels. Rotate, good. Rotate and center. And rotate. Good, we have four more. trick with this one is our shoulders are down and back. We're not letting our hip wobble. Good, last time. Excellent, and center. And we're gonna come to a standing position for our last exercise. So, you're gonna take left leg is forwards, and I know I'm opposite you. Left leg is forwards. Right hand is going to be up top. Left hand is going to be in the small of your back. So do the best you can. We want to have three contact points. So we want to have it running from our head, touching the back of our head, touching our spine, and running through the crease of our hips. So we are going to have our weight in the left leg. Take the right leg back just a little and keeping contact with all three points, we're going to fold forwards, sinking into our left leg just a little, and then come up nice and tall. This is a balance challenge. So forward, and back up. So if you watch, you'll notice that I am not allowing the dowel to come away from any of the three touch points. If you feel that the dowel is not touching the glutes anymore or the head, you may very likely be rounding your spine instead of hinging at your hips. Here's two. Good, and one more. Excellent, all right, let's switch. So now weight is going to be in the right leg Left hand is up high, right hand is in the small of the back. So, right foot is forward, making sure everything is nice and tight. Take the left leg back just a little, and here we go, we're gonna hinge. And come back up. my hand position for comfort. We have three more, but that still means that the dowel needs to be in contact with three touch points on your body. Back of your head, your spine, and your glutes. Good, one more. Excellent. Let's bring the dowel down. And those are your mobility drills for your hips. They're a little bit challenging, but work through them the best you can. Focus on quality over quantity. Most of the rep ranges are about six to eight. Start with six, and if there are some that six is too many, start with three to four. You can do this every day, as long as your hips and the rest of your body are okay with it. Typically go through one round. As you start to get better and as you start to progress, you can repeat this for two and up to three full rounds. But start slow, listen to your body, listen to your hips. And I hope you enjoyed our happy hip mobility drill. And I will see you for the next round. Have a wonderful day. See you later.